The video is from Twitter user Kun Air showing the police beating down protesters. These photos are from the Twitter account of Human Rights Watchers Kun Sunai Pasok, showing three reporters shot by rubber bullets. The reporters are from Channel 8, Pacha Thai, and Khao Sok. What was thought to be a peaceful protest ended up as a violent crackdown. What was fixing to be the biggest protest this year ended up as the most violent crackdown since the pro democracy protest began in February last year. According to the latest reports, over 30 people have been arrested, many more suffered from injuries. The confrontation between the protesters and the police started before 7 p.m. The violence did not end until before midnight. The story I'm about to tell is based on what I saw. We got to Sanam Luong around 5.30 p.m. The protest was scheduled to start at 6 p.m. Two decks of containers stood in the middle of Sanam Luong. The police weren't going to allow the protesters near the grand parks. Just imagine what would happen to the police if they let the protesters near the Grand Palace. This is Thailand. We know what we know, right? Now, even before the protest was to officially start, there were, by my estimation, well over a thousand people there already. It was fixing to become the largest protest this year, and why not? Pro-democracy leaders are imprisoned without bail or a guilty verdict. Palawacharat MPs and senators voted down the third motion for constitutional redraft. Great injustices are happening. And for the first time in months, the people may actually come out by the thousands, if not ten of thousands. There were many families with children, food vendors were everywhere, skateboarders put on a show, kites with faces of the jail pro democracy activists were passed around, parents and children were flying those kites, people sat around on the ground of Sanam Luong talking, eating and mingling. The goal of the protest, as announced by the organizer, was to fly kites and paper planes into the Grand Palace as a symbolic act of protest. Then on the far side, next to the Justice Court building, a group of protesters were pulling down a container. Reporters flocked to the area. The protesters finally succeeded in removing two containers, opening up a gap. What they found behind the containers were a police water cannon truck and riot police, and no one was surprised at what they found. The police commander announced for the protesters to not come to the gap as the path leads to the Grand Palace. The protesters did not cross the gap. Instead, they tried to pull down another container. The police demanded them to stop. Every time the protesters tried to pull down another container, the police fired water cannon blazed with tear gas. The protesters returned fire with bottles and rocks. Still, no protesters crossed the gap. The situation of trying to pull down another container, water cannon fire, plastic bottles thrown, rinsed and repeated itself for perhaps 20 or 30 minutes. Then a loud explosion was heard from some distance behind the protesters. It was then that the riot police moved up and poured to the gap. For the next hour or so, the police methodically took over the street while the protesters retreated and regrouped. Tear gas and water cannons were used, the police shot rubber bullets, the protesters returned fire with bottles, rocks, slingshots and firecrackers. The police commander kept announcing for everyone to go home, otherwise everyone would be arrested. Announcer is for the police to move forward and attack and arrest everyone they find on the street. To arrest everyone they find on the street. Needless to say, the families and children have long since left the scene. Over a thousand people were reduced to perhaps a hundred or so. Now, with the police seemingly having secured the Sanam Luang area, we decided to leave, heading for Kasan Road. There were still protesters in the area of Rajadam Nengang Road, just next to Kasan. On Kasan, it was a complete alternate reality from Sanam Luang earlier. It seemed just like another party night. Music, food, drinks, party goers, everywhere. 
But as we walk down Hausa, smoke and tear gas filled the air. People grabbed water bottles to wash out their eyes. Many rushed inside. They did not know what was happening. But the police had made their way down Rajdamna. It was like a scene from some monster or horror movie. First came the smoke or the fog, then followed the monsters. We then found ourselves in the middle of Rajdamna Club. Protesters tore up the streets. Pots and plants were everywhere. A small fire was set in the middle of the street. The police were marching down, firing rubber bullets, water cannons, and tear gas. Protesters returned fire with rocks and slingshots. When the shooting of the rubber bullets became too intense, the protesters ran and regrouped. The safest place to be was inside Council Room. Bright light, music, shopkeepers, innocent bystanders everywhere. But it wasn't safe. The police eventually moved down the street and dispersed everyone. They are coming down Khausa Road now. The police are coming down Khausa Road now. Hours of violence. Scores of injuries. So what can we take away from last night? Police overreaction? Check. Police brutality? Check. Containers should have never been there? Check. But also, Anyone who understands the ground situation knows the police were not going to let the protesters pull down containers that block the path to the Grand Palace. Therefore, the crackdown, unjust though it was, was not a surprise. It was to be expected. Every reporter on the ground knew it was coming. The protesters knew it was coming. If anyone said they did not know, then they are either naive or lying. Similar to in February, when the protesters marched to the 1st Infantry Army base, which houses the residents of General Rajut Chan Usha. Should the containers and barbed wires have been there? No. But when the protesters removed the containers and climbed the wall of the army base to cut the barbed wires, we knew the police would not have allowed it. Remember the march to the Grand Palace last year, when protesters wanted to deliver letters to the king? Same situation. The police weren't going to allow the protesters near the Grand Palace. The situation was tense, but there were protest leaders to negotiate a peaceful solution. The truth about last night is this. The police are what they are. The instrument of General Benyut, and we know what to expect. But what about the protesters? There were two groups of protesters. One group was families and let's call them ordinary civilians. Parents who did not plan to bring their young children out to a scene of tear gas, slingshots, and rubber bullets. Then there's another group of protesters, a much smaller group, who knew exactly what would happen if they pulled down the containers. You see, Thailand's pro-democracy movement is caught in a trap. The situation rinses and repeats itself. Breach the containers, crack down. Breach the containers, crack down. But to what end? There are two ways a protest can achieve its goal. One is through peaceful civil disobedience. That's why Penguin Pilot kept reminding the protesters we must remain peaceful no matter what. But for a peaceful protest to put enough pressure on the government that will lead to change, it requires a large number of demonstrators. That's why Anu Nampa said we want a million people in the streets. That's why Rumba Nusaya said we want two million people in the streets. In reality, they don't need a million or two, but they do need tens of thousands, if not a hundred thousands. Remember last year, General Bayut first agreed to a constitutional amendment because there were tens of thousands of people in the street. Now he no longer cares. Another way for a protest to achieve its goal is for the violence to be on such a scale that the government has no choice but to give in to at least some demands so as to prevent further chaos and anarchy. But that also requires tens of thousands of people in the streets. It comes down to the number game. So the question then becomes, with the crackdown and violence that have become a routine at these protests, 
how many people will come out for the next one?